Hello, Chicago. We are T minus 10 days to the biggest Chicago Bears draft of the 21st century. And Bears Nation still has more questions than William, the refrigerator, Perry's mother, when discovering the fridge of an empty fridge. <laughs> Have no fear, friends, for we've got you covered in all angles in the fast approaching 2024 NFL draft with a very special expert guest who has spent his professional life covering the Super Bowl highs and last place lows of the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Welcome to a big time football night in Chicago on Chicago Sports Podcast, Monsters of the Madhouse, the voice of the Chicago sports fan. I'm your man, Brandon Trax Hyatt. We appreciate you kicking off your week with us. Our guest tonight is a three time Emmy winning Chicago sports media legend. <laughs> who has been on the scene and sometimes on the call of the biggest Chicago sports moments of the last 30 years. He broke into Chicago sports game in 1995 when I graduated high school with WGN <laughs> and quickly hit number one, hosting the city's top-rated sports talk radio show, Sports Central, with former Bears great Tom Waddle. Sports Central with former uh, Tom Waddle was a freaking, oh my gosh, it was great. I can't even explain it. When I heard it, my mouth dropped. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he was also leadoff man and the closer for WGN's TV and radio Chicago Cubs coverage for nearly a quarter of a century. Some of us haven't even been alive that long. It is freaking <laughs> amazing what this guy has done. At NBC Sports Chicago, he piloted the Emmy-winning sports talk show Chicago Tribune Live and Sports Talk Live. Today... He is a co-host of the ultra-entertaining Cap and J Hood with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 weekday mornings, where we spend our mornings with him, drinking our coffee, and just trying to get right before we deal with all the idiots of the world. He is a Chicago Sports Hall of Famer. He is Mr. Chicago. He is Dave Kaplan. Dave, welcome to the Madhouse. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. It's an honor to be on your show. I love the Rizzo jersey in the background and the Singletary and all of it. So thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you for being here. Yeah, this is a pleasure. Yeah, man. thanks for answering the call, man. We really appreciate you, and it is an honor and privilege for you to be with us once again. Dave, if we could go way back in time to a time when Dave Kaplan had hair. How did a kid yeah. from Skokie fall in love with Chicago sports as a kid? Uh, that's a really good question. I, first of all, used to have hair to my shoulders. Whoa. <laughs> Drive my late father crazy. Like, can you get a haircut, please? Nope. <laughs> and uh, I played Division three football and had the hair sticking out the back of my helmet because I thought it looked cool. I wasn't a good enough player. I thought I had to look cool. Uh, but I remember... My mom telling me, rest in peace, that when I was three years old, I would want to sit in front of the TV for, she said, two hours watching golf. This is in the 60s when there was no HD, there was no cable, it was snowy. And she said, you could sit there and watch golf. I found a letter cleaning some stuff out recently. I lost both my parents. My dad died in 2000. My mom died three years ago. And I was cleaning out a box of stuff of hers a few weeks ago, and I found a letter. We were in New York visiting my mom's parents. My dad was still here in Chicago, and the letter said, I was like nine years old, and it said, Dear Dad, love you. How did the Blackhawks do? How did the Cubs do? How did the White Sox do? Summer's almost here. Love you. And wow. that was me, man. I was that guy who... Loved Jack Brickhouse, loved Harry Carey. Harry, Harry Carey is my my guy. Like, I've got a Harry Carey statue, like, right back here. You can probably see it. Harry, right back there, that my wife bought me for my birthday. And I liked Harry because he didn't care if he, if people went, I can't believe he just said that on the air. And that's how I am. I'm going to always try and be honest. You ask me a question, you may not like the answer, but I'm going to tell you the truth rather than if you're going to be kind enough to give me your time to listen or watch, then why would I give you some vanilla answer? Because I don't want to offend anybody. That's not who I am. 
I don't personally attack unless you are a grade A jag. Other than that, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I've had players go, dude, you killed me on the post game show on the Cubs. And I said, you went 0 for 4 and left seven guys on base. What would you like me to say? <laughs> That's who I am. I shoot from the hip. My Waddle says to me sometimes, and Hood says, yeah, you're ready, shoot, aim. Yeah, I'm passionate, man. So are you guys. You wouldn't be doing what you're doing tonight if you weren't freaking passionate. Right. Hell yeah. And I appreciate that. We all appreciate that about you, Cap, and the way you bring sports entertainment to us and your honest way. In terms of how you built on that, what's your first memory as like a Chicago sports memory as a kid? You were talking about the golf stuff, but like Chicago sports memory that that really stands out to you. Uh <laughs> I would tell you it's probably I remember my cousins visiting from out of town and they were older than my brother and I. And they were the Cubs had gotten off to a really good start in 1969. I was eight years old and I wanted to go to the game with them. They were going to the game. And my mom went, you're not old enough. You're not going to the game. What do you mean I'm not going to the game? And the Cubs got off to this amazing start. They're rolling in 1969. And then the Mets go by them like a freight train. And I remember being so bummed that they weren't going. There was no playoffs then. It was the National League champ and the American League champ. That one I remember. And then I really remember the Blackhawks because the home games, if you guys will even remember, were blacked out. Mm -hmm. And so I remember taking my transistor radio into bed with me. I was a little kid with the little earpiece in with the little brown cord on it and listening to Lloyd Pettit, a shot and a goal. And I would listen to the Hawks play the Rangers or the Bruins or the Canadians. It was amazing stuff. So, yeah, listening to hockey and baseball were probably the first things because you're too young. The Blair, the Bears, if they didn't sell the game out, they were blacked out. They weren't on TV. Whoa. And so my neighbor had this, like, 50-foot antenna on his roof. And we would go to his house because he could pick up a channel from South Bend, Indiana, and we could watch the Bear game. Now it's like my kids are like, what, what are you talking about? We just put on Fox. There was no Fox back then. So it was it was crazy. Cap, you were uh, you played college, or you played basketball and then you were a coach at Northern college coach at Northern. You're also a scout for the Pacers and the Sonics. Yeah. How did you go? How did you go from coach and scout into sports media? So good question. Um, how I got into coaching first. So I was never the biggest guy. I'm five foot nine. I'm not the fastest guy, the strongest guy, but I loved being a part of it. I went to a small division three school in St. Paul, Minnesota. And so one day I went to the get my mail out of the student center. I was it was like September of my senior year of college. So this is 1977, 78. And there's a sign up and it says that this high school, Kellogg High School in St. Paul, was looking for an assistant basketball coach. And I'm like, I can do that job. Yeah, I had no business going for it. But I call this guy Doug Fields. And someday I'm going to call Doug Fields and tell him what I'm up to because without him, I don't think I'm here today. And so mm -hmm. I call him. He says, come for an interview. It's 10 minutes from campus. I drive over. We meet. Really nice guy. He said, you know what? The hell with it. Let's take a shot. I'll pay you $1,000 for the season. You're the head junior varsity coach, and you'll assist on the varsity. This is awesome. And so I do it, and I'm hooked, man. I am hooked. And so the season ends. They offer me the sophomore job and the assistant varsity and I think I was going from $1,000 to $3,000, and I got accepted to law school. I mm. had less than zero interest in ever going to law school. My late father was an attorney. I, my brother's an eye surgeon, trained at Mayo Clinic. My late mom was the head of uh, dietary services at a major hospital. My dad was uh, valedictorian in law school at DePaul, mm. and then there was me. And I was not the best student. I was not the most mature sports man i had to find a way i've got add i'm sure never been tested mm -hmm. but i guarantee right. you i do 
that I sit around at a desk and get your 30 minutes for lunch and your 15 minutes for a coffee break? What are you kidding? No way. I'd kill myself. I couldn't do it. (laughs) And so I decide I can't do this law school thing. But my parents tell me, what are you going to do with yourself? You got a degree in English. You need to at least go get the degree and then do what you want. So I come home from graduating college. I'm going to start law school in uh, August. This is May of 1982. May of 82. And so I come home and I'm looking at the Sun Times and I'm a huge newspaper guy. I open it up and there's this column. It's still in there to this day where it says transactions. Bears traded this guy. Cubs did this. Purdue University did that. So that day, it says Purdue University fired their assistant basketball coach. I'm looking at it and I go, I can do that job. That's how naive I was. I was like 21 years old. So I call Purdue University. Now, one thing I have is a photographic memory for phone numbers. Mm-hmm. So I, I could tell you right now, I don't know if the area code has changed. It probably has. But it was 317-494-3214. I haven't called <laughs> Purdue in 25 years. <laughs> so I call it. And lady answers the phone. She's like, basketball. I said, yeah, is Coach Gene Katie there? She said, sure, who's calling? I said, you tell him David Kaplan, the coach at Kellogg High School in Minnesota. Two seconds later, Gene Katie, I said, coach, I saw you fired your assistant coach yesterday. I'd like to apply for that job. Oh, where are you, coach? I tell him. He said, how old are you? I said, 21. (laughs) 21? What's your level of experience? Do you have anybody on your team that can play at Purdue? He's thinking, if I got some big-time player, maybe he'll give me a gig and I bring the kid with me. I said, yeah, we were 8 and 16, coach. We're not very good. No, we don't have anybody. He said, get 10 years experience and call me back. And he hangs up. And I'm like, well, how can you not see I can do this job? That's how naive I was. <laughs> the very next day, pick up the paper, same column, Northern Illinois University announced that their assistant coach had resigned. So – now, I knew who Gene Cady was. I have no idea who the coach at Northern was. There's no Google. There's no looking up phone numbers on a computer. So I call what's called directory assistance, 411. Oh, <laughs> directory oh, yeah. assistance. Yeah, do you have a phone number for Northern Illinois University? She said, yes, 815-753-1000. I'll connect you. Connects me. Northern mm. Illinois. I said, hey, excuse me, who's your men's basketball head coach? <laughs> John McDougal. I said, could you transfer me? Yes, his extension's 1633. Well, at Purdue, they had a, a secretary. And at Northern, there's no secretary. He answers the phone. Basketball, Coach McDougal. I'm like, uh, hey, Coach, I'm calling. I saw that your assistant coach resigned to take a junior college job. I'd like to apply. Uh, where are you coaching at now? Uh, I just finished my first year at this high school in Minnesota. I'm 21. You got no chance. I said, coach, you got to let me come out there and just meet with you. I promise you I can do this job. Uh, There's no chance my AD is letting me hire a 21-year-old kid who's got one year of JV coaching uh, at a high school. No chance. I said, coach, I'm begging you, man. Just let me drive out there tomorrow. I'll be there whatever time you say. Now, if he was still alive, he would say to you, quote, because he said this many to many people, I only let that son of a bitch drive out here to get him off the goddamn phone. (laughs) I drive out there, borrow a tie from my dad. He says, be here at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. I drive out there, little blue blazer and a light blue shirt with the little buttons on the collar and a tie from my dad. I walk in. And you know how you meet somebody and you go, I'm going to marry her or I don't like that person or that's going to be my best friend? I walk in this 64 year old man and this 21 year old kid who have nothing in common. I met him and in two seconds. I go, I love that dude. That, that (laughs) guy is awesome. So he takes me on a walk around campus and he says, uh, so tell me about your, you know, studies. And I had a degree in English. Why do you want to be a basketball coach? And he's like, that's the arena we play in. And that's the coach's locker room. And that's where our players live. And that's where they take math class. And, 
That's the football state. We walk for three hours. We get a cup of coffee. And then he walks me back to my car and he's like, David, thanks for coming. You're a hell of a nice young man. And you're utterly unqualified for this job. <laughs> and I'm like, Cole, I can do this job for you. I swear to you, I can do this. And he said, there's no chance that you can do this job. A and B, my AD will fire me if I hire you. No, so <laughs> I get in the car and I am half in tears and half like so mad. How can this guy not see that I can do this? So now it's, I guess I'm going to have to go to law school. So I was a beer vendor, my brother and I, to pay for school. We were beer vendors at White Sox at Cubs game. So I start saving all my money. In August, I'm going to leave for law school like the 20th of August. Like August 1st and 2nd, there's a Hubie Brown, Mike Fratello basketball clinic in Milwaukee. I take some of the money I save from vending, and I go to the clinic. I stay one night at the Hyatt in Milwaukee. I'm by myself. I know nobody. I'm writing down, here's Mike Fratello's transition offense. Here's Hubie Brown's trapping defense. Here's how they recruit players, blah, 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 blah. And I get paged. There's no pagers. There's no cell phones. Uh, David Kaplan, please come to the front desk. I come up there. The guy said, dude, we've been paging you for two hours. Your mother has called six times. You've got to call home. I'm like, oh, this can't be good. I call home. My mom's like, where have you been? I'm at this clinic, mom. What do you want me to tell you? She's like, well, Coach McDougal called, and he said he needs to talk to you tonight. So I call him. It's like 9 o'clock at night. I call Coach McDougal. He's like, you're a tough man to get a hold of. I said, I'm at a basketball clinic. He said, well, I wanted to let you know I hired someone finally for the job you interviewed for, but I didn't want you to read it in the newspaper. Ironically, the guy that got fired at Purdue, he hired as his new assistant. <laughs> and he said, but my third assistant, it's called the part-time assistant. It's full-time work, part-time pay. <laughs> that job opened this afternoon. The other guy resigned. If you want it, I'll give it to you before I post the job. I said, done, I'm in. He's like, oh, whoa, hold on. Your mom just told me you're starting law school in like three weeks. I said, coach, screw law school, man. I, I have zero interest. <laughs> wow. That's not me. He said, well, do you want to know what it pays? I said, I don't really care. I'm taking the job. He said it pays $4,200 for the year. And I said, huh? In. Done. And so I get a part-time job helping a moving company. I delivered pizzas, whatever I had to do to be able to pay my rent. My parents helped me as much as they could. And he said, all right, be here next Thursday. Well, that started this joyride of four years that I'm an assistant coach in Division One. The second year I'm there, our top assistant gets sick. He's in the hospital for months. They move me up to full-time recruiter. We signed Kenny Battle and a couple other really good players. And then Coach McDougal gets fired. Now what am I going to do? <laughs> I'm out. So I, saw, I start a newsletter. I take all the kids I'm recruiting, and I type up this newsletter, and I, it says, you know, Bob Jones, 6'7", Chicago Simeon, struggles going to his right, really good going to his left, excellent shooter, got to get stronger. Here's his ACT score. Here's his grade point average, and here's the home phone number for the kid and his coach. There was no cell phones back then. And I print it up. A buddy of mine is a printer. He prints it up. We put the Windy City Round Ball Review, I called it, and it had the skyline of Chicago. I ship it out to 250 coaches around the country asking them, if you want this info, I mean, you couldn't get this info. It was amazing stuff. Give me $100. Dude, within 200, I had 250 subscribers within three weeks who thought it was a regular newsletter. That's <laughs> all I got for you. And so I said, screw law school. I started going to every high school gym, tournament, summer camp, high school game, whatever it was. And I start writing a, a monthly newsletter. And then I get a call. Hey, can you come on the Chet Kopic show? Rest in peace, Chet. He has me on regularly to talk about Illinois and DePaul recruiting because DePaul was number one in the country back then. Mm -hmm. Now they're horrible. And then uh, Chuck Swirsky has me on. And the next thing you know, sports radio starts. And then I get the break of my life. So Sunday morning, DePaul's number one. My phone rings at my parents' house. Their phone rings. This guy says, hey, I'm calling from Sports Channel America. 
have you ever done any television? I was told you used to be a coach. I said, oh, I've done a ton of TV. I've never done anything but watch TV. And to this moment, I've never taken a broadcasting class in my life. And he said, you have. Can you do the DePaul game in two hours? I'll pay you $800. Our analyst got snowed in. He can't get here. <laughs> yeah. I, my dad went to DePaul. I coached against him when I was at Northern. I knew everything about every player there. So it was easy. I do it. It's like what I was born to do. The game ends. This guy comes up to me. He's like, I was in the truck listening. Wow, you're really good at this. Uh, I got 10 more games the rest of the season. Do you want all 10? Why am I flying a guy from L.A. here and paying those expenses? You're right here. I'll pay you 800 bucks a game. He's going to pay me eight grand to do 10 games. Yeah. Done. And that was 1987. And the next thing you know, sports radio starts early 90s. I get a chance to do a show at AM 1000 that wasn't ESPN yet. Then I leave. I get hired at WGN. And then I come back to ESPN 1000. And i doing TV and radio and just keep making my way, man. And here I am today. Wow. That's you, you made the right call, Cap. Yeah. Good law school. If, if, look, if you find something that is your true calling, you and they open the door that much, you kick, kick that son of a bitch in. And don't tell me, well, my girlfriend wants me to go out tonight. I can't do that. There was <clears> nothing <throat> getting in my way. Nothing. And if um. Somebody offered me an opportunity. I'm in. Yeah. I actually uh, worked for a moving company and delivered pizzas as well. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it takes oh. to pay the bills. My first partner, I got hired to do the high school game of the week nationally. We had Kevin Love when he was a junior in high school and Kyle Singler. And I had um, Kevin Durant's final high school game against Ty Lawson of Oak Hill Academy. And my partner for some of those games was a guy trying to make it, Mike Breen, now the voice of the NBA. So everybody starts somewhere, man. Right. Um, you broke into Chicago radio like Michael Jordan did the NBA in 1984, Kev. Um, you, lost, you lost Sports Sports Central. And I, I have a question. What do you, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this in Shay's fashion. Shot or no shot? Broadcasting came more natural than sports radio. Broadcasting, well, when, when you say broadcasting became more natural than sports radio, I think I tie them all together. Broadcasting, whether it was radio, TV, that was just what I was born to do. I've had opportunities to go back to coaching. One of my dear friends, he's gone now, Rick Majerus, offered me to be the associate head coach at Utah. And I had already started my broadcasting career. I didn't want to move to Salt Lake City, A. B, I knew Rick wasn't in great health at that time. And so I turned it down, even though it would have had a massive pay raise. And then six months later, Rick got super sick and he quit at Utah. I would have been the guy they hired when I turned it down, became the associate head coach for six months. And then they got rid of him and brought in a whole new staff and he was out. So I would have given up my broadcasting career and I would have had six months of being the head coach at Utah. And regardless, I would have been gone. And so, you know, I look at this broadcasting thing and it's just, I love it. I absolutely love what I do because in this city, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There could be a huge <laughs> trade. There could be a fire. We got five teams. It's amazing. So, yeah, I'm super jacked to do what I do. You know what I'm super jacked about? Dave Kaplan on our show, folks. Over 110 in the chat. This nice. is going crazy, man. They love you. <laughs> we love you. This is great to have you in the building. Great to be with you. I, I could sit and listen. I don't know how I would fit in a booth, in a phone booth with you. But if we <laughs> could make it together in a phone booth, I would literally – Pay money to listen to you read out of the yellow pages in a phone book. Man. <laughs> You're riveting. You're that riveting, brother. So, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, here's 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 what gets me, man. You you speak with the passion of a fan and the perspective of a studied professional. It's really hard to get two things right at the same time, especially in my world. What kind of media voice have you striven to be for your audience? Would you say? Uh, I want to always be 
just like the fan who was begging to get that opportunity to broadcast. I don't want to ever lose that enthusiasm for our teams. I remember I would argue with one of my partners. He'd be like, dude, you can't be a fan. You're just a journalist. I'm like, well, that's effing boring. <laughs> when I criticize the Cubs, that's my favorite team. I love the Bears. I love the Bulls. The Cubs was always my the one that coursed through my veins. And so when I blast them, it I think, and I've had people there begrudgingly tell me, it gives you credibility because the fan base knows when they lose, you're as pissed as they are. Yeah. It, I can't just watch. Like, I'm going to watch the game here in a little bit. Cubs Diamondbacks. I can't be that guy that goes, yeah, I don't care if they win or lose. I just want to watch a good game. No. I want the freaking Cubs to beat the Diamondbacks tonight. And when they make mistakes, it pisses me off because I'm a <laughs> diehard. Yeah. And I think that might be some of the appeal, whether you agree. There are plenty of people, whether they're in your chat or they're going to listen to this down the line or they hear me tomorrow, they're going to be like, man, if I could reach the radio, I'd punch this dude right in the face. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't want everyone to agree with me. But mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what I think. And I know that some of the Justin Fields <clears throat> fan club hated me when I was saying I want Caleb Williams. It was not negative toward Justin. I'm just chasing greatness, and I haven't seen it at that position in my lifetime. Yeah, and your passion comes across, Cap. And uh, I really just got to say that when you were talking and you said when you get this little bit of opportunity and they open the door that much, kick the son of a bitch in. Yeah. I got you. Because like, that's what we're doing here, right, guys? So like, right. thank you for being here. Thank and you Sage advice, really appreciate that. And then just from – with that passion and that that fandom that comes with you know the way you approach your gig, from out from outside looking in, it seems you have pretty instant chemistry, you know, with everybody you tend to work with. And I'm sure it just appears that way. I'm sure there's some work in that, but what's the capability <clears throat> to make it seem so easy for you? Uh, first of all, whoever I'm with, I respect their opinion just like I hope they will respect my opinion. I'm not that. I, I first of all, when we do our show, we have no script. There's no rehearsal. None of that. It's awesome. Uh, we come in at like six fifteen in the morning. I got my coffee with me, and hoodie rolls in. Shay goes, "All right, what's our topics today, boys?" Well, we're tomorrow. We're nine days from the NFL draft. Anything break today? No. Well, Pedro Grafal had a meeting. Uh, the Cubs played. The Bulls are getting ready for their playing game, whatever that means. So whatever the top stories are, we'll figure it all out. And then we'll be like, all right, let's go. I don't want to know Hoodie's opinion on any of it. He doesn't want to know mine. <clears throat> so we turn on that mic at 7 o'clock, and he sets it up, and then I say whatever the hell is on my mind. Let's go. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. So, Cap, so uh, we're all big fans of yours. I mean, I know – I work for the railroad, and in between jobs, we, my whole crew's listen to you and Hoodie. So, what's the secret? I got to know what's the secret sauce behind the magic of Cap and Jay Hood. Uh, he and I just—we both are. We grew up in the Chicago area, and you know, I've always said to him, like he's from the South Side. I'm from yeah. the North Side. He's black. I'm white. But we were raised so similarly. We have so many of the same tastes that we and things that we remember from our childhood. And I respect the hell out of what he's accomplished. He respects me. And we just we just go, man. I don't agree with him on every take that he has, but he's so passionate about the White Sox where I am about the Cubs. And today, you know, he was just blasting Pedro Grafal. And I said it's look, Jerry Reinsdorf may be a wonderful human being. You're not trying to win. That's disrespecting the fan base to just sell the team. Yeah. And some friends of mine are like, aren't you going to get in trouble for saying that on the White Sox station? No, <laughs> because I'm speaking from the heart. My yeah. brother, who I'm super, that's my best friend, that and my wife. My brother is a diehard White Sox fan, and he's furious. He's like, you're being loyal to the people maybe that work for you, but what about me, the fan? You're not being loyal to me. You're not trying to win. And I right. think that that is offensive. I do. I agree. I agree. Yeah, totally. 
hundred percent. Yeah, David, I was curious, let's go ahead and dive into this draft that's in a week from now. Um, you've obviously been really supportive of Caleb Williams over the course of the off season. And I've never thought for a minute there was any kind of hate towards Justin Fields. I think you understand what's best for the Bears' future, as does Ryan Poles. Do you think without a shadow of a doubt, Caleb Williams is not just the answer immediately, but long-term for the Chicago Bears? Yeah, I truly believe that he is that guy. I really do. I've watched so much tape on this guy, and then I call people who know a hell of a lot more football. I was listening to something with Phil Sims today. We played it on the air it's early this morning. Phil Sims said, look, I've watched a lot of tape. Justin just doesn't process well. Caleb Williams is a much superior thrower of the football. Uh, I, I think Justin needs a fresh start. I really, really do. Will it ever click? I don't know the answer to that. People that I trust in the league question it. I know everyone hated Luke Getze here, but we have Albert Breer on. He'll be on tomorrow, every Tuesday. That guy's as tapped in as anyone in the league. And he said he went around the senior bowl and started <clears> asking <throat> GMs, whose fault was it in Chicago, Luke Getze or Justin Fields? He said every guy told him. It's not Luke Getze's fault. That offense, if Justin processed it properly, things would have worked better. That's what Phil Sims said. One of my college fraternity brothers, scouts in the league, tells me all the time, dude, he's a great kid. He's an awesome leader. He's tough, hard-nosed, smart, intelligent. He just doesn't understand how to play quarterback in the National yeah. Football League. He doesn't. And so when I say that, and then he, and I saw some of the people in your chat, when Justin unfollowed the Bears in the NFL, I said, oh, what are we doing, Justin? That's taking the coward's way out. Immediately, everyone thought I called him a coward. There's a difference yeah. to me. When you're unfollowing then just quietly do it. Why do you have to go on a podcast and announce it? And I think what the league said to you is what they think of him. They gave him a yep. sixth round pick. Maybe yep. they could have got a fifth if they sent him somewhere where he didn't want to be. But the people were not beating the Bears door down to get Justin <laughs> Fields, unfortunately. Caleb Williams, come on now. Let's go. Let's see what Let's this can do. Surround him with talent. Game on. Yep. Yeah, you kind of touched on this a little bit, Cap, about kind of what separates Caleb from Justin, kind of their skill set. But what kind of makes Caleb the field general that he is? That's kind of the kind of the name that he's been called, kind of style of quarterback. What makes him such a good field general? It just seems as though, look, he. if you go back and look at his career, when USC gave up these ridiculous, ridiculous, awful defensive performances. He felt he had to play hero ball. Did he yeah. make some bad decisions? No question about it. Some of that will get coached out of him by Shane Waldron and the new offensive staff. This guy's got a big time arm. He, everyone I trust in that league thinks he is by far the best quarterback in this draft. Uh, to reference Albert again, Albert last week said in the last year, he has asked every single executive or coach that he's come in contact with, who would you take number one in the 2024 draft? He said, I have not found one person that works in the league. I'm not talking about Dan Orlovsky that wouldn't <laughs> take Caleb Williams number one. I, I've watched more than my share of tape, and there are guys that do this for a living that know more football than me. But I look at it and I go, that dude is elite. Now, if he wins here, he will be the – when he's done, I'm talking if he wins big and they win a Super Bowl and he's the reason, he's an all-pro quarterback, name me who would be ahead of him in all-time Chicago lore in history other than Michael Jordan. Right. He'd be number two. He'd have a statue next to Jordan. <laughs> Absolutely right. 100%. Yep. Can you take our viewers uh, through the Bears process of how you think – they're evaluating their options for their top picks in the 2024 draft, like what that looks like. So I had a chance to talk to Ryan Poles back in the fall for quite a while. Uh, I really like this dude. I really like his process. It's just so different than the way they did business when Ryan Pace was here. And he worked hard. And I remember telling him, Ryan Pace, when he drafted Mitch, 
Hey, man, I love a guy that has conviction and goes, I don't care what the price is. That's the guy. I got to go get him. But you better be right. And he wasn't. He wasn't right. And it cost him his job. And he works for Atlanta now as a, an assistant. And he may never be a GM again. Ryan Poles has gone through, for example, they told every coach or scout that was going out to watch bowl games, senior bowl, uh, the combine, whatever. Anyone you come in contact with, take your iPhone out and they come up and they see Michael and they go, Michael, you went to high school with Caleb Williams, didn't you? Yeah. Can I have two <laughs> seconds? And they had the video on. Tell me what you first question. Tell me what you think of Caleb Williams. And they wanted to see how a guy reacted right at the get go. Not did he go? Um, yeah, he's cool. They said not one guy, not one. Didn't say that he was the best teammate they'd had. They said he holds you accountable. He picks you up when you're down. This dude is a great leader. And he said, the amazing thing is this rep out there that he's a diva and that he wants this and he wants that. He said, we couldn't find anybody that would sign up for, th for him being a diva. He said, we're doing all our homework. They took him through every type of psychological testing. They put him on what's called the whiteboard. And there's you can find it on YouTube if you look. John Gruden on the whiteboard. He said the smartest quarterback he'd ever put on the whiteboard was Jameis Winston. He said it was ridiculous where he would write a, a really complex play. Then he flipped it over and started talking to him about why'd you get in trouble for the crab legs at Florida State? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? He said, uh, okay. Now, the play that I gave you a few minutes ago, I want you to write it back up there. And it's on the other side. And he said, not only did he write it out, but he said, Coach, why are you having this receiver run this pattern? Why don't you take him here, block it this way, and now you've got this up? He's like, wow, I never really thought of that. And from what I've heard, Caleb is very, very similar in his processing of understanding an offense. And so the bears have left no stone unturned. They've talked to Drake may, and they've talked to Jaden Daniels and they've done all their homework. This is the guy. Fellas, we're over 200 in the chat. And I'm oh. telling you right now, I would be going bananas right now, but, and I've been, I haven't even been paying attention because I'm captivated by cap on the show right now. <laughs> I mean, we're breaking records right now. Faster than I break records at the Chinese buffet on Tuesdays, man. Wow. This is <laughs> crazy. This is a lot to process. That's what, that's what happens when you bring Cap in, man. We're having fun, man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's great. This is a lot of fun. And you were just, I don't know how I'm gonna follow that tracks, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. This is a you were talking about Ryan Poles and the due diligence that this front office and coaching staff are doing. You know, and we're all really excited about Caleb Williams. It's he's going to be the guy that's coming in here. What do you think is at stake for the Bears, the front office, and coaching staff if he were to not turn out to be this this stud that we all think he's going to be? Well, if he's not what we all think, they're all getting fired. That's a fact. Yeah. And yeah. Ryan Poles is okay with that because I said to him, "Dude, this is your legacy right here." He looked at it and went, it is, but if I don't swing for the fences, why am I in this job? Like, you got to have big balls to do that job because if, <laughs> if Caleb Williams busts, Ryan Poles is the next Ryan Pace. He's looking for a gig with another team. Oh, yeah. But if Caleb Williams leads you to the promised land, they're building a freaking statue and you're getting a massive contract extension. I'm talking for Poles. And he's cool with that. He said, you just got, you got to do all your homework. You got to evaluate everything and then go, okay, that's where I got to go. He goes, it's the same thing when he's in the draft. Cause I asked him, why did you not take a receiver or an old lineman in your first draft? He said, because they weren't the highest rated player on my board. And I said, but you had a need. He said, listen to me, as long as I'm the GM here, unless it's a really bizarre set of circumstances, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building the board. He said, I got scouts all over the country. They're flying everywhere. They're staying in hotels. They're writing reports. They're meeting with people. He said, now we all come back and we go, okay, here's the deal. 
Brandon is the best player on our board, period. He goes, we're picking at nine. Who's the best guy on the board other than a quarterback? Because they've already will have taken Caleb. Is it Joe Alt? Is it Dallas Turner? Is it Roma Dunze? Is it Malik Neighbors? Or, God, we got four guys with the same exact grade, and somebody wants to come up and get a quarterback here. Okay, we could trade. Not too far down, so we can get one of the guys that we have all listed at the same level. But he said, when they took Jaquan Brisker, he said, I never thought he'd be there when we were picking. But he was clearly the number one guy on the board. He said, so I take an offensive lineman who's a good player, and I watch Jaquan Brisker become an all-pro safety somewhere and go, Jesus Christ, I had that guy rated at that, and I didn't stay loyal to my board. Now, you may say five years from now, well, your board sucked. But you got to stay loyal to it, or you got no process. Yeah, Cap. We see a lot of similarities, I think, between the Texan last year's Texans teams and this, the Bears this year. Mm -hmm. uh, C.J. Stroud took the Texans to the playoffs this year. Do you, do you think the Bears expect Caleb Williams to make to get to the playoffs? Is it playoffs or bust for the Bears this year, or what do you think? Yeah, the I don't know if I are? would say it's playoffs or bust but i think that that is a very legitimate expectation you want seven games you still have a last place schedule again and you've added keenan allen and deandre swift and gerald everett and you've marginally upgraded the offensive line you have a top 10 defense now that montez sweat is here i think they still got to get another edge player whether yeah. that's bringing back in or using pick nine there but I also think you need more on the O-line, and I think you need another receiver. So is it a team that you feel like can win the Super Bowl? Probably not. But I do think it's a team that should be able to get to the playoffs. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, David, since you brought up that number nine pick, I am curious. I know I've, I've heard you and, and Hood talk about it a lot. Um, I know they split the, the, the war rooms up to kind of defend each position that, of need at that pick. Um, what do you think the Bears' number one, or Ryan Poles, more importantly, number one focuses for that ninth pick? Do you think there's one of those groups, one of those war rooms presenting the wide receiver position, offensive tackle position, the edge position that has any more leverage than the other because that's just a position that, first off, Eberflus might want more than the rest, or but Poles, more importantly, might want more than the rest? If Look, if Joe Alt is there, I don't think he will be at nine. But if Joe Alt was there, I don't see how you leave a perennial all-pro left tackle on the board. I don't. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. imagine Darnell Wright on the right side and Joe Alt on the right. left side? Oh, my God. You're that's, ten, that's 10 years yeah. of yeah. elite For play to stay healthy. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he'll be there. Is there a chance four quarterbacks go one, two, three, four? It's never happened. I think there is. I think Minnesota, Denver, JJ. New Orleans, yeah. Vegas. I think they're desperate to come up and get whether that's J.J. McCarthy or whether that is Drake May. Now, I think Washington's taking a quarterback at number two. I do. I yeah. think. Now, New England's having dinner tonight with Michael Penix Jr. He's in <laughs> New England. Um, he's passed all his medicals, but he's had two ACLs and two non-throwing shoulder surgeries. I mean, that would be a good dinner for me. What's that? He had those at dinner or? Yeah, or they before? did that. That was the appetizer. <laughs> so I don't think Michael Penix is going number three, but maybe they feel like they can trade out of three and still pick him up a little bit farther down the board. But if four quarterbacks, let's assume it's Caleb, Jaden Daniels, or Drake May, the other one goes three and four is J.J. McCarthy. Well, now what do the Chargers do? They're getting the pick of every position player but they also have cap issues they had to let Keenan Allen go it's an older team do they say you know what I'm gonna trade out of five let somebody else come up to get Marvin Harrison or Joe Alt that that could happen I don't mm -hmm. think Ryan Poles is trading up I don't they've only got four picks in this draft you'd have to give up capital from next year but I also no, saw not. something today where Marvin Harrison only visited two teams. He yep. visited the Arizona Cardinals at four and the yeah, Chicago baby. Bears at nine. And a guy tweeted just that fact and said he either wants to play with Kyler Murray, it appears, 
or Caleb Williams. And you know who retweeted it? Caleb's dad. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was super cool. So I don't blame him. You know, if you said to me, the Bears are going from nine to five or four, and they're giving up the Carolina number two and something else to get him, and they believe he's that good. Okay, have yeah, at man. it. Man. Have at it. You only got Keenan Allen for one year, and then you'd have to re-sign him at big money, and he's in his 30s. So maybe that's the way they go. We'll see what happens. It's I cannot look, I'm excited for when the commissioner goes and with the first pick. In the 2024 NFL Draft, Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams, quarterback, mm -hmm. USC. And I'm going to be at Soldier Field that night hosting on ESPN 1000. It's going to be insanity. Insanity. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. then when we watch the rest of that top 10 unfold and we see this guy go and they go, whoa, who went? And all of a sudden you're thinking, wow, we might be able to slide up and get someone there. It's pretty crazy. Very good. Yeah, you kind of just kind of alluded to this cap, kind of taking a <laughs> step back, looking at the entire top 10. We got 10 days and exactly 10 days will be full swing into the first round of the draft. Yeah. But these last 10 days have kind of been notoriously known as smokescreen season. A lot of rumors flying, a lot of lying lot of season. Who, yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> kind of already alluded to like a new story from uh, Marvin Harrison. We've already kind of known about the quarterback. But what kind of first round do you expect to happen? Do you expect a lot of these trades to kind of come to fruition? Or are you going to kind of think that a lot of these are smoke screens and it's going to kind of fall chalk? Uh, I think that there will be some trading going on. Maybe not as much as some people speculate. But Minnesota went out and made a deal to get a second first round pick. I don't think they did that because they thought someone was going to be there at 23 that they wanted to take. They have 23 and 11 now. I could easily see Minnesota saying, okay, we don't have Kirk Cousins here anymore. We're going to hit the reset button slightly for a year. We're going up and getting whoever that is, J.J. McCarthy or whoever that might be. They got, I love their coach. I do. Kevin O'Connell, that dude is really well regarded in the league as a great developer of quarterback play. He was with the Rams with Sean McVay. So I could see a trade there. You're telling me the Giants are going to stay married to Daniel Jones for more than this season? Uh, if they can get a quarterback, they have to take one. Now, if the first four picks are quarterbacks and there's not one they want on the board at six, I could see the Giants then being somebody willing to trade down where they could get extra capital. They need help. Um, the Chargers don't need a quarterback. Do the Titans already throw in the towel on Will Levis? Or do they take Joe Alt? That's where I think Joe Alt goes, where you go, we got Peter Skaronsky at guard. We got Joe Alt at left tackle. That's pretty damn good. And then I got to think Atlanta needs some help defensively. They've already got Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Darnell Mooney. They've spent money on their offense with Kirk Cousins. So I think they could take uh, the kid, uh, Dallas Turner, who I love from Alabama, who I think would be great opposite Montez Sweat which could leave Malik neighbors or Roma Dunze on the board when the bears pick. So we'll see a lot of options. And I'll tell you what, uh, the, the option that I had tonight with having cap on, man, this has been a privilege. This has been an honor. We've got a couple of Cubs questions, a couple, uh, diehard bulls questions, but, uh, we got a couple questions from the guys in the chat. We got over 300 in the chat right now. And uh, Bear Lismo wants to know if you're going to be in uh, London week seven because he'd like to buy you a beer. Yeah, I would like to meet Bear Lismo. Bear Lismo <laughs> was part of the Justin Fields fan club, and he and I have had a good relationship <laughs> for a long, long time. And we were tangling over Justin. Uh, but Bear Lismo is a diehard Bears guy in London. He lives in London. So Hoodie and wow. I like to joke with him that we're the number one show in afternoons because it's six hours later <laughs> when we're on and it's afternoon drive out there. But uh, we're hoping to be the show. Danny has told us if we send a show, it might be you guys because we would be the afternoon show there as opposed to sending Waddle and Sylvie <laughs> when it would be like midnight right? because it's six yeah. hours later. So we're hoping that happens, Barrelissimo. And if it is, I would love to have a beer with my guy. That would be awesome. That is so cool. Hey, um, 
really quickly, one other one other highlight that I liked. Uh, Munoz was asking, Cap, would you trade up to five for MHJ? What's the price? Like, if you're telling me I got to give you my number one pick next year, I'm not doing it. I don't believe. Because how about this stat? If you take the top 10 highest paid wide receivers right now in the NFL, how many of those 10 went in the first round? Three? One. Oh, one. Wow. <laughs> you got, like, the highest paid guys. Tyree Kill, fifth round. Mm-hmm. Amon yeah. Ross St. Brown, fifth round. Uh, they just extended Devonte Smith today, but his extension at twenty five million a year would put him on that list. But it doesn't kick in until after next season. Uh, Devonte Adams, second round pick. Cooper Cup, I think he was late second or early third. Yeah. And yeah. last year's draft, you could find Puka Nakua went in the fifth round. So if you are really good at scouting, you should be able to find some receiving help. But if you said, "Give me the Carolina," First, our Carolina's second round pick that we own next year, and give me your third round pick, and I can go from nine to like four and get Marvin Harrison Jr. If Poles has an elite grade on him that he's number one on his board, be awfully hard to not do that. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely like very you know potentially getting. Two blue chips, you know, and people are saying generational QB, generational wide receiver in the same draft. That's like an A plus 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 a paper I've never handed in before. I mean, oh my god, can you imagine the fan base if they announced if Goodell went to the podium and said, "We have a trade." Yes, uh, the Los Angeles Chargers have traded the fifth pick in the first round, and with that pick, the Bears select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. Dude, this oh city goes insane. Heads would explode. <laughs> oh, hey, Scottish Bear says that uh, you have a good following in Scotland, by the way. So we were excited that you just bestowed your presence here with us. And you, he's talking about Scotland, too. That's amazing, man. <laughs> you got uh, a good following Scottish everywhere. Bear, I, my dream is to go with my wife and play golf in Scotland someday. Hasn't oh, happened, wow. but I hope someday it will. Doesn't Jay Hilgenberg have a golf course that's like some sort of like it, the layout is like Scottish or something? Yeah, I or? played it. It's called Strawberry Creek. It's right yeah. by Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is yeah. probably 30 minutes north of my house. Yeah, um, off the, off the I played 50. it. It's super cool. Super cool. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get into this Cubs question really quick because people are really excited about a couple other teams we have in Chicago. Um, oh, tracks. To a, through a brutal April, including six games with the World Series champions, Rangers and National League champion Diamondbacks, three with the billion dollar Dodgers and a series with the Red Sox and ranks their toughest opening slate in years. What grade do you give them through the season through the first two weeks? And who's been your team MVP? And what record will equal a successful uh, April to you against this schedule? Well, first of all, I think they've gotten off to a really good start. They're nine and six. Uh, Unfortunately, the guy I have a ticket on to win the MVP at 50 to one, say is Azuki, who's off to an awesome start, went on the injured list today with an oblique. Yeah, hopefully that that is not a long-term thing because obliques can be a real pain in the neck to get healed. Uh, but Michael Bush, I have a ticket on to be rookie of the year. Michael nice. Bush, if he hits nice. a home run tonight, I know their <laughs> game just started. If he hits a home run tonight, he will have hit a home run in five consecutive games, yeah. and that will tie the all-time Cubs record with uh, Sosa, Sandberg, Hack Wilson, and Christopher Morrell, who have all done that. That's it. And he's the only rookie since at least 1901. They don't have records any farther back to Homer in four straight games as a rookie. So this kid's a beast. And then I love the Imanaga kid that they signed out of Japan. He's been off to a phenomenal start. Hasn't allowed an earned run yet. So uh, I think that this is a team that can go to the playoffs without a doubt. I think they're the best team in their division. But if they're in the hunt in late July, Tom Ricketts better get the ATM card out. Right. Yeah, better this year. 
Yeah, and I agree. Yeah, for sure. they, they should make the playoffs. That's what we're all hoping for. And you mentioned uh, Showtop. Do you think he can continue his success that he's had so far in this By season? By the way, I got to give you guys breaking news. Oh, snap. Uh-huh. Michael Bush just hit a home run. That's no, Cap himself. no, no shut no, up, no. dude. Yeah, no way. Yeah, my Hit buddy like texted me from my YouTube channel. Ones. My buddy Tommy just texted me and said Michael Bush with a billion exclamation points. Oh, and I'm looking yes. top second. Michael Bush homers to center field. One nothing Chicago. Oh my That's god! Awesome. Cap, yeah, you, you willed that into existence, bro. <laughs> Man- manifested. <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, that's, that's me. yeah, and Showtime's been incredible, too. Do you think that he can be the glue to this rotation that it needs until Steele gets back from his injury? Do you think he can continue the success? Yeah, I do. Now, I, I, he's a fly ball pitcher. He's got really good stuff. But, you know, I was out there opening – was it opening day? Yeah, opening day. And he had a couple balls that were tattooed off of him. And they died in center field because it was freezing cold. It was rainy. Ball was not getting out of there with a bazooka. I want to see what he does when it's <laughs> mid-August and it's 94 degrees and sunny and the wind's blowing out at Wrigley because he's not a ground ball pitcher. He's a fly ball pitcher. But I really like what he's done so far, big time. White Sox just lost 2 nothing. by the way. Shocker. Oh, man. 2-14. <laughs> Cap, I can't sit here wearing my Bulls jersey and in good conscience not ask you a Bulls question. Uh, do you think do you think that they survived the Eastern Conference plan to score the eighth seed in the East and a date with the Celtics? Uh, I think they beat Atlanta on Wednesday. I do. And then they get the loser of Philly in the Heat, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And so – Wow, you got to go on the road to beat that team. I won't give them that game. I'll tell you that they're going to get to that game. Yeah. But I'm not sure they win the game on the road. Yeah. yeah I think it sounds about I, right. I just got to say real quick how, how uh, I can't believe that we just had a living legend announce a rookie home run record on our <laughs> show. That's incredible. We got to cut Breaking news. Out that cap. That, that's amazing. Cool that just that, happened man? for real. I um, mean, it's literally unbelievable. Yeah. Um, while we're on the Bulls, unfortunately, do you think uh, I, I heard you guys talk a little bit about it on Cap and Hood? Do you think that the Bulls should stick with? With uh, Donovan as the head coach, do you think he will remain the coach? If do you think he'll choose to leave for some for somebody else? I know the Kentucky thing doesn't seem very likely to me, but yeah, now they just hired Mark Pope, so that okay, job they has got their guy. Right. Uh, I've known Billy since 1992. Billy wants to be in the NBA. He doesn't want to be in college basketball anymore. The game has changed in college basketball. Uh, I think he'll be there. Look. He's given a roster what, by what I call the owners and the front office. I, I nicknamed them the settlers because all they do is settle for mediocrity. Purgatory. Hey, Billy, yeah. good luck. You got to go up against Boston or whoever, and we're not. We're going to get you Javon Carter and Tory Craig. Roll uh, it back. Yeah, I mean, I've known. Bra- I did a lot of Butler games over the years, so I know Brad Stevens very well. Brad Stevens goes, oh. We've got a really good team, but Drew Holiday's available. Let's go get him. Oh, we can lock up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Let's go get him. And that's Porzingis. all they keep doing. Yeah. How Porzingis. can we get better? And the freaking settlers at 1901 West Madison don't give a shit about competing. All they care <laughs> nope. about is, well, we were decent Preach. this year. Continuity, though, Cap. Continuity. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna think- run it back again. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think if Donovan, do you think if Donovan's given another offer, he should take it? They've got two more years on his contract, so they're not gonna let him out. So no. he's going nowhere. Mm. There it is. Yeah, let's, when you're looking at the United Center, they got two teams. You got the Bulls, but let's kind of skip over to the Hawks quickly. Going into the Hawks season, kind of the main focus was obviously Connor Bedard. He got hurt midseason, missed about a month, but then rallied back, kind of finished strong, looks to be the Calder favorite. What do you kind of grade his performance on this Blackhawks team that's pretty bare and suffered through a lot of injuries? And overall, do you think that the Hawks took a big enough stride in their rebuild so far? Look, they got a long, long way to go now. They just signed the kid out of Michigan. 
Uh, and people were like, why would you only sign him to you burn a year for three games? Because he wasn't going to sign that contract if you didn't let him do that. A, B, he's a really good player and he wants to get paid faster rather than waiting another year to get to the NHL. As for Connor Bedard, he's the real freaking deal. He is the Calder winner for me. And he will be one of those generational talents that the Blackhawks will be building around, marketing around. And someday when they get this thing where it needs to be, that guy will be the front and center face of that team. Absolutely. Maybe. Hey, now, um, I didn't hear anybody saying they should trade Connor Bedard for a haul. <laughs> I <really laughs> right? I know, I man. This point. Let's okay. trade Wemben Yana for a haul. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't hear when that. When you get that guy, why would I trade Caleb Williams when it's a clear upgrade? A, B. I said, came on one day to start the show with Hoodie, and I said, Hoodie, it is, it's such a joke, this Connor Bedard. Why do we have him? I would <laughs> trade him for a haul. And everyone's like, <laughs> what? I said, I'm kidding. You see how stupid it sounds? You got a great player, yeah. man. Just embrace it. Well, yeah. even, even even more ridiculous after the fields trade, people started to hate Williams even more. I said, I said a lot to a lot of guys. It's like after the Hawks traded to Brinkett, being like, we don't we don't want to bring we don't want uh, Bedard because we traded to Brinkett. Like, doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make does not make. And we said better. today, hoodie was funny. He said there'll be you know some guy named Carl living in Berwyn. All of a sudden, is going to be painting his nails pink <laughs> and dr- getting a pink iPhone because. My guy, my guy, uh, Caleb's doing it. I guess I can do it too. Yeah, <laughs> people are all going to be on board if he's good. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Switching over to the uh, south side, which uh, we already know how you feel about that. I mean, outside of bringing airplane bottles in to spike your your campfire uh, shakes, uh, what <laughs> advice do you give the White Sox fans to survive the likely hundred plus loss in two thousand twenty four this year? With their sanity intact, Cap. I don't know if your sanity can be intact. Look, I watch every game, Cubs and White Sox. I just literally, while you're here, flipped from the White Sox. As soon as they got the third out, they struck out Aloy Jimenez. Ball game over, 2 nothing. Finally, they get shut out for the sixth time in 16 games. That's insanity. But I watch, I, I watch baseball because I love baseball. I watch every game. The Bulls, I have the Blackhawks. I watch it all, and obviously the Bears. Um, If you're a Sox fan, I'm not going to tell you not to go. I'm not going to tell you not to watch. That's your entertainment. Just understand, it's offensive when management doesn't try to win. Like, do I think the Cubs should have done more? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they should have gone out. They said that, you know, there's some issues with their TV network and a lot of teams are dealing with that. Okay, fine. I don't want to really hear that because your stadium is like an ATM, but at (laughs) least they're at $230 million in payroll. Right. The White Sox, the White Sox and the A's are the only two teams that have never spent a hundred million on a player. That's it. The Royals just gave 285 to Bobby Witt Jr. They were the only other one. They're not on the list anymore. The White Sox and the A's, that's the company you're keeping? That's offensive. Yeah. There's no hope until Reinsdorf's gone, unfortunately. Well, you got to wonder, yeah. what is what is Luis Robert going to ask for? Because they might have to be spending their first $100 million contract. Well, he signed. They got him locked up. I can look it up. I don't know how many years he has. Probably an ambulance. Deal, but he's not close to free agency yet. So okay. he's going to be around. They signed Aloy. Now, they tried to trade him in the offseason, and no one wanted to take the money. Moncada, they inherited that deal. No one wanted to take the money. That's why they said goodbye to Tim Anderson. It's just, I mean, when you're, your leadoff hitter is going to turn 35, and his name is Robbie Grossman, what? <laughs> you're telling me there's no one in your minor leagues at all that you could play? you got to play Robbie Grossman, and now you sign... 35 year old Tommy Pham. Oh my God. It's a joke. Cap. I got, we got one more question for you, man. And again, thanks for joining us. It's been thanks a for pleasure. having me. It's an honor. No, man, that's our honor. But like your, your passion and your personality and your loyalty 
to Chicago sports, it just stands out so much, you know, every day in what you do. And I think that right. really represents the city of Chicago very well, to be honest. And there's a lot of great sports cities in the country and in the world. But in your mind, what makes Chicago the greatest? Because of our fans. Our fans are passionate. I think there's four legitimate markets. That's not to say there aren't good fans in other towns. But for me, it's New York, Chicago, Boston, and Philadelphia, where sports are religion. Like, I grew up in a home where my dad was a lawyer, but my dad was a sports guy. And his two boys, me and my brother Bruce, we were going to be sports fans. My mom, who knew nothing about sports, when she married my dad and moved from New York to live in Chicago, she became a sports fan. They had White Sox season tickets. So this city, man, when the Bears win, the whole city just feels like they feel good. And when the Bears lose, Monday, people are pissed. <laughs> it's, it's the fans that make this the greatest sports city for me in the country. I think it's amazing. It's right there with those other three. Yeah. Folks, I'll, I'll tell you really quickly, something really special happened to me today. Some of our staff members, Cap, he knows about it, uh, was able to go visit my friend Mongo, our friend Mongo, who's uh, battling right now, and he, he's working his way to Canton. Um, just want to give you guys a couple pictures really quick and, uh, give you a, a little background detail information on, uh, being there. So this right here is, uh, Mongo obviously and his wife, and she's worked diligently on creating a space in their living room to able to bring more people in. The original space that they had was in the back room and that was a little tight and he was getting more and more people especially when they had the uh, when, when he got the final call, you know, that he was going to Canton, it, it was packed. It was going bug nuts. They had over 50 people in this room and I think 20 to 30 in that room. And I don't even know how they got 20 to 30 in that room. I mean, it is tight. Um, but yeah, that's, that's them right there. And then this is their nurse. She worked diligently with them every day, taking care of all of his needs. And you can see right there, He's got his Hall of Fame uh, blanket on, and he's proudly showing that off. And then this picture right here is with me and Mongo, and Misty just – she broke down. She said, he looks so happy in that picture. And uh, it's just awesome to be a part of, of their journey. And, I mean, you know, when you talk in terms of somebody that's fighting, I have never met somebody – you know, my mom passed a nine from cancer – and I thought she fought pretty hard, you know, but uh, this guy right here, man, oh my gosh, he is, he is something else. And right here, this is my invitation from Mongo to, uh, to go uh, see him get enshrined. And uh, Brian and uh, George are both paying for him to be a medevac flight because he has to have a special flight with the oxygen bottles and the nurse, of course, and everything to make sure that he gets his way over to Canton. So it's just, it's truly an honor to be a part of this. And while I was there, I told him that I was going to uh, have Cap on the show tonight and, and how excited I was. And he could tell in my face because his eyes got a little bit, he, you know, at, at that stage of ALS, a lot of it is the eyes and oh, some, some of the face because that's the last part of the, you know, way to communicate and whatnot. And he has this thing, it's called a Toby machine. And it reads his eyes. And he said, he's going to Canton, baby, and uh, on the machine. And it was just so cool. It, it was like to be a part of that and to visit. And uh, t I took a vacation day and took care of some stuff today. But, uh, yeah, he was he was uh, excited when I told him that Cap was coming on and all that. So, uh, yeah, really good yeah. day over. The yeah, I, I know Steve very well. He's a teammate of ours at ESPN 1000, and it's just – Breaks my heart to see what he's going through, but you're right. That guy's a warrior. Yeah. 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 I mean, when you, you talk about Chicago, man, I mean, he personifies exactly what that is in Chicago, man. It, it doesn't get any more Chicago than Steve Mongo McMichael, right? That Steve is what a Chicago Bear defensive lineman is supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Warrior. Yeah.
Yeah. I mean, you know, in, in terms of, uh, I like, I like you're saying, you know, chasing greatness and it's been hitting the comments, you know, Mongo, uh, that, that is like personification greatness right there. Because I mean, you look at Richard Dent, you look at, uh, you know, our, our buddy Hampton, who we've had on a couple of times on the other end, they took care of the bookends, right? But Mongo took care of everything in the middle, baby. And that was before they even registered some of the stats uh, for individuals. So I'm sure they'd be even greater than they are right now. I mean, I, I was talking to Misty one time and she was telling me that uh, Sap, Sap was having a conversation with Mongo and she was there. And he says, I can't believe that you weren't in before I was, you know, first ballot. And uh, that speaks volume for that that type of uh, player, you know. Yeah, that's a fellow yeah. Hall of Famer saying that. And um, I mean, I'm older than you guys. I watched uh, Mongo play. Mongo told me the story that he got let go by the Patriots because he was a bit of a rabble rouser there. And he said, the Bears picked me up for 500 bucks. Five hundred dollars. Wow. That was the waiver wow. fee. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the cost of a beer now at Soldier Field. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Cap. I mean, it, it goes without further ado. We all know where to find you, but I always have to throw that in there at the end of the show, just so people know where to find you and follow you, please. And thank you so much for blessing us with your presence and being on our show, brother. Well, let's do this again. They can find me ESPN 1000 weekday mornings with Jonathan Hood from 7 to 10. And then I have a YouTube channel myself. It's called The Recap, R-E-K-A-P. I'm going to record the White Sox one uh, here in a moment. And then when this Cubs game, it's one to one in the second goes final. I'll record a Cubs when I do Cubs, Sox, Bears, Bulls. So, uh, yeah, you can find me right there on YouTube. All right. Check that out. Thanks again, sir. You got it. You don't. You got my number. So stay in touch and let me Cap. know when you want me to come back. Hey, Cap. Cap, real quick. Is- I, I'm your wife does the compass meetings that I do for Lou Malnati's. I yes. know who she was. Yeah, but she is awesome. You're a lucky man, dude. She's she's <laughs> so cool. So do you work for Lou's? I do actually. Yeah, I'm a manager at the Highland Park location. At the Highland Park. <laughs> yep. Yep. Highland Park, Illinois, or Indiana. Illinois, Illinois, yeah, I'm on the North Shore. Dude, I'm right down the street. I'm going to come <laughs> see you. Let's get him. <laughs> Let's go. Go, man. When are you working next? I'm working tomorrow, man. I'm what in time? there. He's working what all time? time. All night, two, two to ten, I'm in there. Two to ten, I'm coming by tomorrow afternoon. We're taking a picture. Oh, hell yeah. yes. I'll have oh, a pizza so- ready for you, too, bro. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Mike's hot honey. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hold on, guys. Listen to this. Hey, boss, I need vacation day number two. Stat. <laughs> exactly. All right, Dustin, I'll see you tomorrow, and you guys have my number. Call me. Hell yeah. Right, thanks, Cap. Sure. Thanks, Cap. Right, thanks, Cap. God bless. How are you, too, man? Thanks. That was freaking That's awesome, guys. That was awesome. awesome. A living legend, man. Wow. Oh, man. I'm not going to be able to go to bed now. <laughs> Justin, don't wash your hand because we, we have to uh, <laughs> see this hand that you shake with, with the cat, the living legend. There. M- Michael will want to sniff it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Uh, Sorry, you're the youngest one, man. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> that, man, that was, yeah. that was awesome. So good. Yeah, that was. Man. Incredible. Incredible. Yes. Dude, I've been I'm listening to that guy. right I've been listening to that guy for 15 yeah. years, man. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Track well, like I, li- oh, I like Robert Lee saying, take that. I love – he always <laughs> says, take that on the recap. Take that. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, you know, he's always saying, take that. Yeah. 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 <sighs> man, I'm beaming right now, guys. I'm, like, <laughs> trying to just, like, come down. Like, come down, been, yeah. It's real, right. dude. It's been so real. It's so cool. <laughs> well. So, so where are we at within terms of the games out there right now? I think the, the oh, here we go. Cheryl just Cubs and D backs are tied one after two. Okay. Yeah. Michael All Bush's right. homer was a solo. It's the only run on the board. Awesome. So, what are they, who do the Cubs come home? Who do they play when they get home? <laughs> Your next guest, Caleb Williams. I mean, dude, <laughs> the way the trajectory is going, it I I'm not I'm not going. I mean, we're hey, kind of listen. a big deal. We're kind of a big deal. I don't know. 
They <laughs> played the cap. The cap was a very big deal today, man. It was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I was driving, and I was like, at one point, I was just like trying to keep it all together because I was like trying to answer questions and that go visit Mongo. And then I had to take care of some stuff on the side and I'm, you know, messaging over to uh, Homer Gwen where Mongo lives. And I'm like, dude, a, almost two years ago, I was in my garage. I had one person watching me on this podcast and I had my phone and it wasn't this phone. It was like three phones before this. And it was on my, my town trash can. And I had it turned uh, straight up and down because I didn't even know that you could do the landscape mode, which made things better. And you could see my bucket head a little bit better, right? And it fell off the freaking town trash can. And I had the one viewer. And I was like, I was like, kind of like that Jack moment with uh, Rose, you know, on, on Titanic. <laughs> I was like, don't go. Hold on. I'll be right there. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and I picked it up and I put it there. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a Folgers uh, coffee can, and I'm like, hold on a second. I have an idea. So I took this. This is a Jack Daniels cup, and I'll pretend it's the Folgers, right? I have it right here. <laughs> and basically, I just used it as a backstop, and it held it up. And I'm like, okay, now we can roll. I still had the one guy. I don't even remember who it was. Sorry, one guy. If you're there tonight, <laughs> please let me know it was you. But, dude, it was to start from those humble beginnings, and this is still a beginning in of itself, you know, especially in terms of a guy that's been here for over three decades, and yeah. he's had three dec over three decades of dominance, and he's covered everything, guys, and he was on our freaking show. How many yeah. podcasts in the world can say that? I mean, it is I crazy. Listen, I listen to I listen to Camp and Hood every morning, man. And I, I roll in. I'm supposed, supposed to start work at 8 o'clock. I always get a little late just so <laughs> I can hear shot or no shot, literally, because they kick off shot or no shot at 8 o'clock. I'm like, I got to show up to work at least five, 10 minutes late so I can get, get shot or no shot. And, and I'm driving to work this morning and I'm listening to Camp do shot or no shot. And I love Hood too, as well. But I'm listening to these guys. I'm thinking to myself, like, I am going to freaking talk to this guy tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. be able to ask him a question. I'm going to pick his brain about. The, the thing that he knows best. It's just, it's, it's, thanks, Brandon, for the opportunity. It's just awesome. Yeah, thank awesome. you, Brandon. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah great work. Great work. No, hey, man, no, thank you guys. I mean, it was an honor and a blessing just to be able to have you guys in the building and to each one of you start from that beginning where I was. And I always remember that. And that's where our grassroots are at. And the whole thing of it is, is when you guys came and I asked you guys, you know, hey, let's, let's chop it up, send me a video, let's, you know, look at this, whatever, and then fast track you and see how it, you know, not everything sticks and, but you, you develop, you know, like this, this little like culture, you know, and, and we're, we're growing, man. This is really cool stuff. And it's, it's, I wish I would have started off like this two years ago <laughs> where you guys are at. I get like, I would have like, I don't know what's kept my freaking attention this long. Cause usually my attention's like a goldfish. You got to tap on the freaking glass to look, oh, you know, no, so. no way. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, to all our, to our 300 uh, viewers, thanks for coming out, watching us guys and supporting us. We, we appreciate that. Somebody asked a question in here. Where was that at? Kyle, oh, Kyle yeah. just broke some news. Angel Reese was drafted by Chicago Sky today. Wow. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. That and then also, uh, what you call it, the center, man. I was excited Hello. about that. The one that won the championship. Wasn't she, Yeah, wasn't she, uh, she, Angel Reese, wasn't she like the second best player in college, women's college basketball or no? I, I think she yeah, but she was picked at number seven. Prospect. Okay. She was picked at number seven. We actually picked somebody higher than that who was who won the championship. Yeah, and, with the third uh, pick. Yeah. With okay. the third pick. Yeah. I'm trying to go ahead. Does somebody have have the name on recall? Yeah. Camilla Cardosa. That's South it. Carolina, That's it. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. She's a beast, man. She's a and I'm very careful with that because like my wife was like, be careful when you're saying females are beasts. They're probably not really, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's different. But, uh, dude, she she is tough, man. And she came from a really rough way to go around. I think she came from overseas, came over Brazil. the hard way. Yep. Brazil, yeah, man. Freaking gorilla, 
drug freaking warfare over there, craziness action. Wow. And escaped escaped all that, come over here. And uh, you know, she she's a she's a baller, man. She's a baller. She just won the freaking championship. We took her at three, and then we got freaking Reese at seven. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. traded up. We traded up to get Reese at seven, from what I read. Yeah, yeah, we I think we yeah. had, I think I think we had the eighth spot. Oh, did we? Yeah, we did have the eighth spot. Yeah, yeah you're right. So um, I saw something else. earlier. All right, it was like uh, Reese and Cord- Cordoso. Is that how you say it? Cordoso? Yeah. Yeah, they combined for 280 games in college basketball, and they made five combined threes. So, like, the team that they're building is like that 90s NBA basketball of they're going to be hard inside the paint. They're going to play bully ball. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Hmm. So Munoz wanted to know really quickly, uh, backtrack, and how did I get to uh, to be at Mongo's home? So uh, a little over a year ago, about a year and a half, I reached out to uh, Mongo's wife, Misty, and it took her a little while to get uh, a hold of me. It was like six months, actually, and I thought it was a cold case. I thought she would never you know, respond, much like the 27 bears that I reached uh, over the weekend to uh, get on this podcast. Sometimes you get, you know, a whole freaking boat full and sometimes you draw an empty net, you know what I mean? And Misty, I drew an empty net for six months. So I didn't think nothing of it. And uh, one day out of the blue, she was like, yeah, I'm interested. I'll, I'll definitely take the interview. Uh, And what sparked my interest was again, circling back to my own personal uh, you know, history and my story uh, when my mom passed in 09, she was my mom and my dad who adopted me when I was three years old. So when she died, a big part of my life died. And I said, if I ever had any sort of like platform to bless other people that are in this similar situation, I would use it for that greater good. And I wanted to interview her to her, hear her story. Cause so many times, including myself, I'm interested in hearing the, uh, the star the superstar, the guy that's that's on the gridiron, that's killing it for us, his decade of dominance, you know, his Hall of Fame numbers, all that stuff for our beloved Bears. But never do we ever really think about – we know it's there. It might register and, you know, we might kick the can around for a little bit, bit but not long enough to really, you know, seriously consider what it's like for a woman to go through this who they share a kid with in Macy – and, you know, she's just a teenager learning that, you know, her, her dad's days are numbered, right? Right before her very eyes, you know, she's still growing up as herself. And what that's like for a mom, what's that like for a caregiver 24-7? Uh, there's a lot. My buddy, his, um, he, him and I went on this uh, trip in Yosemite, and we were, um, we were rappelling off of this cliff, and I was always the largest like i am now if i showed you a picture of what i looked like in boot camp and even before you'd be like you ate that kid actually two of those kids um and we were going down this rope and the rope what we used to pull this vw bus we thought it was a strong rope because we had always pulled the vw bus whenever it broke down and uh little did we know that every time that you tie that into a knot that that takes a certain percentage of you know strength out so those two rappelled down the cliff about 40 feet into this hole that we wanted to check out the first kid brian he made it my other buddy he doesn't make it he travels and falls 40 feet down breaks his back i go down there at the bottom the um forest ranger comes he tries to move him i said if you even lay a finger on him you that's the you you, you are going to meet your maker because I, I knew I don't know much about this stuff. Right. But I know that you don't move somebody when they fall. Right. So it was the best decision I ever made in my life by threatening that guy's life to move my buddy. But cut fast forward, his fiance actually freaking as soon as she found out what had happened, she was done with him. But Misty is ride or die. Twenty seven years she's been with Mongo. And she's still there to that day. So I wanted to hear from her what this was all about. And so, you know, I I interviewed her. She calls me back with her friend Heather, poolside at Mongo's house, her house. 
And she asked me if I would like to have a co-host. And I says, well, first I need to pray to my God about it because I don't know how I'm going to tell my wife about it. You know what I mean? Um, Misty's a pretty good looking woman, you know, and my, my wife is, is, you know, I can have my hands full with that, you know? Um, so I, I wait for the weekend. I clip back to her Monday and I said, Hey, if the, if the, you know, if it's still on the, the offer still on the table, let's do this. But I got one thing I want to ask you. I says, can we go ahead and get a hold of all of Mongo's friends, interview them, Get autographs signed at Bridges Scoreboard, your Northwest Indiana headquarters with the Hall of Fame menu and the coldest beer in Chicago. And um, sorry, I just had to throw that in there, no, boys. Smooth, it just, it kept, it just kind of happened, is. right? <laughs> so, so she goes, yeah, absolutely. No questions asked. So every autograph, including Jimmy Mack, he was up there. We got all these autographs and all his boys, They, you know, these, this money that they normally would get, they're donating their time and their money by working that and the travel back and forth, all that kind of stuff, especially Jimmy Mack with his foot, you know, his leg foot situation, you know, and all that. They all come, you know, like Jay Hilgenberg, you've been there, Brandon, you know how far it is out to his place. It's not, it's not far away, but it's not close either. It's a hike, you know, um, all these guys are traveling abroad, coming to see him, you know, and the, every autograph goes towards Mongo's, you know, uh, ALS fund for his uh, medical expenses. One year later, man, we got almost 40, 40K, man. It was it was awesome because it costs over $14,000 a month just to help uh, combat ALS. And it's, it's, it is a it is a toll. It, it is a it is a lot. So, um Sorry, Munoz, that was a very long-winded uh, answer, but I just wanted to kind of uncap that and uh, give that to you, you know, um, the, the long way. So hopefully that answered all your questions. If you have any more, inbox me, you know. So, uh, can I um, something about that, Trex? What's that, brother? Can I say something about that? Yeah. yeah. That story yeah. is a phenomenal story, and it really shows – like your thought of just want, like you had this buddy that his 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 lady ditched him when shit got tough, and then yeah. your thought about how how Misty is stuck around and done it, and you be interested in that story because of your background. Look yeah. where it led, look where it led. You know, like the way you yeah. think about things really impacts where you end up and tracks. The way you think about things is the reason Cap was on this show today. It's the reason that you were in Mongo's home today, because you're thinking about it from other people's perspectives and that's really admirable. And I just want to say that because that was like the main thing I took from that story. I mean, Mongo, it's a, it's a terrible thing. It's a sad thing. Like you said, he's fighting and that's admirable too, but for you to, you know, find a, find a way to get involved in that and make a positive impact on it. It's just awesome, man. Great job. And you, and you know what? I appreciate that, but I, I can't, Except that all of the totality in of itself, because Team Mongo, including you guys, no matter where you started, it doesn't matter if you go back 30, 40, 50, 60 years with somebody, however long you've been on this earth. The day you start is the day of who you are and what you represent and where you are in your conviction with that person and what you believe. And everybody on this podcast for over a year now has been ride or die with Mongo. There's been thoughts, there's been prayers, there's been comments. There's been, I mean, people have donated, people have showed up to these events. It has been unbelievable. And I'll tell you what, Chicago, as much as people talk trash about Chicago and how horrible it is, this right here, this is what gives me hope about not only my future, but my children's future it, it is amazing, man. It's still out there. It's still real. And I am I love it, man. It's great, man. It is great. People rallying around. I mean, it's a very terrible situation, right? But it's all about how you are there for that person in that moment. So I, I thank each and every one of you from Chicago Sports Podcast. 
the spot podcast and the other groups that I've reached out to that have helped, you know, because y'all know I'd be spamming, especially when it comes to getting these YouTube freaking shows out and stuff, you know, I'm like, you know, so, um, yeah, man, but no, I appreciate that, Dustin. Good looking out, man. Seriously. Um, yeah. So, uh, where, where were we at? We were talking, oh yeah. Uh, the prodigy, he was talking about the sky, man, and how, how great we are, uh, over there, man. I'll tell you what, I was in love with, uh, old girl from Iowa, but I don't know if they're set up, set up in, uh, yeah, Caitlin. I don't know if they're set up nearly as good as Chicago is now, boys, you know? Well, yeah. just took the number one pick two years in a row, the Indian. Beaver. They have the last two yeah. number pick, so that's uh, that that's something to compete with. But yeah, like like Michael said, it seems like Chicago's trying to build something that is going to be hard for people to like stylistically play against. You know, they're trying to make it make it tough on people. <laughs> so that's cool to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, dude, and the way they did it too this year, uh, power forward center. Those, those girls got some reach. They've got some athleticism. They got some strength. They got some heart. I, I, but Angel, she's talking. got, she's got some attitude too, man. She's, she, yeah. you were talking about that last night. You like those players, man. She, yeah, she's not soft. I'll tell you. Ed. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I, Dano. Yeah. I know that basketball doesn't really excite you. Uh, and I'm kind of like curious. In your Bulls you jersey. Bulls jersey <laughs> on. Oh, but why are you even is. still on the screen when we're talking about women's basketball altogether? <laughs> you know, like. You know, I was like. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Dano talking about WrestleMania, goddammit. Oh, don't get me started, man. We can do a whole show we're on pretty, that. We're actually talking about putting you together uh, in charge. Of like wrestling Wednesdays with Dano or something like that. Nice. Right? We were talking about that the other day. So, nice. yeah, yeah. If that really fits wanted... in your schedule, man, we'll talk about it, man. Yeah, I really sure. wanted to dive into golf with Kaplan today. He was talking about golf this morning. <laughs> he had me going, man. <laughs> oh man. Well, hey, you guys heard it first. We didn't even ask him to come back. Yeah, he told us he's coming back. We, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, we actually, he asked, that. he asked a question this morning, guys, and I want to ask because I, I agree with him, but. I'm sure the typical sports fan who doesn't care much about golf wouldn't. He said golf is hands down the most aesthetically pleasing sport to watch on television. Mm. Anybody, did, I, there was a couple of people that said like watching an FBI, like a college football game on a Saturday. But I, uh, I got to agree. Where's your vote? What, what about walking into like Wrigley Field or just walking up into a baseball <laughs> no, field? No, it, it was more based on like television. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd probably say yeah, so. say golf, yeah. Yeah, you can hear the birds in the background and stuff. You're not gonna get that on football. <laughs> but it's also anyway. hard to beat the Masters. I mean, that's probably the most beautiful course. No, and at, at Augusta, yeah. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Who was it last year that? Uh, what? Oh, it was Rogers? Rogers was with Pat McAfee in Augusta. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was uh, that was great, man. That when they cover that, that's uh, that's pretty special, man. That's it, I like what he's doing over there, man like what he's doing over there yeah. so so what happened uh with with the masters like who who finished out what who was on top i heard uh what do you call it had a really good um and tiger tiger had a really good uh you know uh golf outing and and he finished strong it's kind of like hilly and stuff so they're a little worried about him being able to make it through and whatnot and i was just like really but, I mean, you know, the guy's been through a lot, so I don't want to go too far. I mean, I can't tell you the last time I went up and down hills like that, to be honest with you. I don't want to get on a freaking stair climber at the freaking gym, okay? I think those people are crazy, <laughs> psycho, wacko maniacs. You, know? yeah. you, you, you want to hear a pretty remarkable statistic? I mean, I, I don't know. We're probably not going to see somebody dominate the game of golf like Tiger Woods did. They literally had to Tiger-proof the game of golf, and <laughs> extending courses, making more par four courses. But – uh, Scotty Scheffler has not shot a round over par this year. I mean, he's the he's the closest thing to dominant that we've seen in this sport in the last six, seven years, probably. Man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. Kind of stuff. Really People cool. compare uh, Tiger to Brady and uh, Scheffler to Mahomes, kind of that new age. 
it's really cool to see what he's doing right now. It is if you're a guy, if you're a per- person who doesn't care too much about golf, especially if you're a person that just loved to watch Tiger dominate, start watching Scotty Scheffler. Man, that guy's impressive. He's, no. he's his 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 on a green man. That guy is just flawless. Nails. Doesn't he have a beard well, now too? Yeah, a beard. Yeah, he's got the beard now. Yeah, <laughs> trying to look. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, I, I will personally when uh so Jay Hilgenberg, when I interviewed him, he invited me out to his golf course that he runs and everything. He said he goes, bring out a couple buddies, whatever. And uh, you know, I, I didn't really like he goes, he wants me to show him like how to do this podcast because he really enjoyed it, you know, show him how to run it, start A to B, you know. And I said it might take a while. I hope you got an extra room. You know, and you make <laughs> bacon and eggs and all that. And you start smiling, you know. And uh, but uh, no, I you know I'll drive the the beer cart around for you and do some <laughs> golfing with Jay. And uh, oh wait, they call it a golf cart. But I was gonna ask. <laughs> I would love to, man. I'd be honored, honestly. I like I said, I'm not very good. Um, I don't yeah. know I'm entirely embarrassing. I'm not very good, but I I just love to play, man. It's it's a fun sport. Yeah. Even the people who don't watch golf, I can understand not watching golf but if you've never gotten out and played nine holes at your local course go do it man it really is a blast hey we've got a lot of we we've got a lot of uh golf outings and events coming up this year boys like i told you before family first work whatever you got to do you know all that kind of stuff but if something comes up i recommend you tapping into it and checking it out because everything i've ever been a part of i was asked to come out for the podcast had a lot of fun, man. Had a blast. Really good time. So yeah, we had yeah. we had fun at over at Bridges last time we were there. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yep. And like, and like Cap was saying, like that's that opportunity opening the door a little bit too. You know, you guys yes. ran into David Hall there. You know, like there's always like yeah. something. You know, you, you jumping on them as much as possible is 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 the way I look at it because you just never know who you're gonna see or who you're gonna talk to or. Oh, well, Dano let's definitely let's, jumped let's, onto some. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's kick the door <laughs> open, guys. <laughs> Juggling. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> no, it was a good. It was a good time. <laughs> we had a blast. Matter of fact, Dustin. Dustin has became a full, full fledged. Who's a holic, bro? Like he's keeping the mountains <laughs> blue in every picture. Look at this. Look yeah, at this. We, that ain't no spring, that that ain't no sponsor spring, or what? That ain't no spring water. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I uh, figure if I drink it long enough, they'll have to, right? Just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I want old picture. style. Hey, Justin, just make sure when you get that picture with Cap, you're holding the course light. <laughs> at the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the job. Get fired. The job. <laughs> You heard who his wife is. She's she's pretty high up, bro. <laughs> She'll pull some strings. Did you? So you you worked for you didn't know that was that I had no, wife? no I had no idea and like I had honestly seen That's him. Pretty cool. The, yeah, I'd seen her husband in the background before of those Zoom meetings and. <laughs> like he, I couldn't tell, but yeah, no, that's that's a crazy coincidence, you know. She, she is an yeah. awesome person. She really is. She does a great job in in those uh, meetings we do. Mm, Boys, so let's uh, pay the bills really quick since I've been so neg- neglectful. Right before we close curtain, uh, you know, like I said, Bridges scoreboard, Serendipity Ice Cream Parlor, where it's always, uh, you know, summertime at Serendipity Ice Cream, mm-hmm. Griffith, Indiana. Love the funnel cakes. Love everything there. Love the chocolate He's, peanut butter. Yes, get more than one scoop unless you're a girly man. <laughs> TC's World of Wonders, get all your sports jerseys and memorabilia for the draft coming up. Check out Tom's uh, gear and collectibles at tcsworldofwonders.com. Underdog Fantasy, log on to there, get the app, put in the CSP promo code. They'll match up to your first 100 bucks. It's uh, get five picks right and mega bank your money by 20 times. Place your entry today at underdogfantasy.com. Our boy, our boy Michael can help you with your lineup. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do my best. Bro, is that amazing how many people say he looks like all these different people? Dude? It's crazy. <laughs> he has like 11 custom. fake IDs. You should work for the CIA. You have like 11 <laughs> fake IDs. He's probably like 18, 19 years old. He's got like 11 fake IDs and nobody can figure out who the heck he is. Everywhere he goes. He doesn't man. even know anymore. 
<laughs> he's forever young, bro. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Better than the alternative. Uh, yeah. Budget cars, yeah, right. uh, you know, uh, spring in Chicago land is no time to be without safe and reliable transportation. Get on the road. It's affordable style with Chicago land's most trusted automotive team, budget cars. Give uh, budget cars a call today. Um, and then also Worst Stadium Club, man. They got great food. They've got great games. Get in there. Get it. Get it. Uh, get it. Get in there, man. I, I love the. I love the food. I love the drinks. The mixes. Brandon's talked about the mixology there. He loves it. So get in that uh, gaming cafe, man. Great and worth uh, worth it, Illinois. Right down the street. Down the street. Way to pay the bills. So sorry. Look at Buck Nancy says there are really dudes that only get one scoop. Oh man. <laughs> oh, here we go. Hey, I was I was on my period, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and you knew that. All right, boys. In, in, in closing, let's just wrap it up with uh the nugget of the day. Something special that you came, you know, uh through today that you appreciated and just, you know, give everybody a post toasties. Dustin. Oh, yeah, I mean Honestly, it was just – it was great to talk sports with Cap. The the questions we asked, he really uh, expounded on them and got some good information out there. Him talking to Ryan Poles, you know, the, the conviction that Ryan Poles has in this draft is going to be what, you know, what really – what it really comes down to for the Chicago Bears and us as fans. Like, if he sees his guy that he wants and he wants to trade up, he's going to do it. If he sees that on the board at night, he's going to do it. And – you know, just getting that insight is it was really good to hear from Cap because I, I feel like we got a guy that's making this decision that we can trust. So as a Bears fan, that makes me pretty happy. Michael, don't worry, bro. I think you could take this guy. I got you, bro. I got you. <laughs> oh, geez. Buck. Hey, from now on, from now on, my nugget of the day, from this point forward, we we will uh Announce Dustin by Dustin Cap Jr. Got to grow on me. As of tomorrow, as of tomorrow, Dustin will change, man. You'll see. He'll be walking in. He'll be like, yeah. Take that. Take that. (laughs) Take that. Take that. that. (laughs) No shot. Get you, get you a little Dustin doll with the little string on the back. Hey, that, hey, that. Drinking his Coors Light. Coors Light. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, dude, that's gonna be awesome, man. That's so cool, Michael. What do you say, bud? Yeah, I mean, thanks for the opportunity to talk to someone kind of that elite in sports media track. It's pretty damn cool how kind of far you come in this podcast, and it's paying off everything that you've worked toward. And, Again, as a young kid, college, kind of someone trying to get through into that media, you kind of see what you have to do to get to the point that Cap is. And it's contagious. When you see someone that passionate, it's contagious, and it rubs off on you. As, and as someone that looks up to him, couldn't have asked for a better opportunity than this to really talk to someone like that. So thank you again. And you know what's crazy, though, boys? Like, sometimes you think, like, you're that guy. And maybe you shouldn't be that guy because you're beating on the door till they answer it and it's about ready to fall off the hinge and then they finally answer it. And then you talk to a guy like Cap and he basically just answers everything you've ever questioned. Mm-hmm. Like you you just got to do due diligence and kick it down. That's basically what that's basically what his freaking mantra was tonight, man. That's what his message was. Kick that yeah. son of a bitch down, you know. And it shows in the fact that he showed up here today, you know, yeah. like he's got a, he's got a soft spot for that type of commitment and that type of work and the passion that we got. And that showed today. And just the fact that he would just say yes to us shows that he works hard and he takes every opportunity to fucking do it. So like, that's awesome. And he could have gave us like, Oh, you got 10 minutes with the cat man or 15 he's, dude. Yeah. This guy went over out, the other guys. He was having fun, man. He was having fun. Yeah. He was. He was lit, dude. He was lit. Dan, yeah, what do you say, brother? Yeah, I just thinking. I was just thinking all the how many shows we've had where we've had thirty list, thirty watchers, you know, twenty viewers, and for 
this makes us want to keep going, keep going. When he says to kick the door in, I think this helps us to keep going so we can finally kick that door in. And uh, just, I mean, to be able to share that with you, this group of guys in particular, uh, I mean, it's awesome. Well, I tell you what, I, I thought it was Cap that was bringing in the viewers tonight, but honestly, I think it was the gun show, bro. Oh, so, absolutely. I mean, why do you think I wore this? You didn't think I liked the Bulls, do you? The guys, <laughs> I I want to see. I, I'm going to check. I want receipts. I want receipts. If anybody came in for free, you got to pay up now for this gun show. It's, it's not a free. It's not this free, is, bro. You get, the first one's just a taste. <laughs> Brandon? <laughs> Oh yeah, the 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 things you shared with with us today about Misty and Mongo, Brandon, very cool, super motivating. You know, I was at work when you shared that with me. It's kind of like, look what these guys are dealing with, and you know, she's got a smile on her face. She's excited to see. She's excited to to be, you know, to be inducted. All of his hard work paid off, and the guy's fighting for more than a a, a Hall of Fame induct induction right now, and he's still excited about you know the impact he made over the game. And then just, like I said, Cap coming on here, uh, we, we got to cut a reel out of the fact that we just had Dave Kaplan break news for a rookie record home run, ho rookie home run record by the Chicago Cubs player. That's pretty cool, man. But um, also, we're at 665 sub subscribers today, guys, um, a little bit more than we were yesterday. And I just want to say I'm grateful for every single person that's given us the time the time yes. of the day you know you know these shows are on late they run late people work in the morning these guys still come on here if they miss it tonight they'll go on there tomorrow and check it out i just want to thank everybody who comes on here who chats who keeps us interactive with our fan base and then also the guys who subscribe the guys who who want the notifications who want to know when when we're on next and what we're what we're what, what, what we're getting into especially like next week during that draft um yeah just i like like you said brand i'm new to this it's 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 pretty cool to watch it grow and within the last month, I mean, the amount of people that we've seen subscribe to this channel is incredible. It makes you feel like you're doing something well. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we're babies, bro. And like, this could be a better opportunity. And thanks for <laughs> for seeing something in us to give us the shot to do it. Like, I, I got a lot to learn. We got a lot to learn. But like you said, we could have started on like a phone call with just one other person doing this. <laughs> you we could have had the phone on the... We can have the phone that falls off the garbage. You got to get a Folgers cam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> no, yeah, thanks, Brandon. Very cool. This oh, no a problem, break. man. Very cool. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, that's it. Let's let's actually wrap up early tonight. Just hey, look at us. Hey. Yeah, my girlfriend, my girlfriend will be happy. <laughs> yes, you will. All right, boys. And, and as always, make sure you uh, fight like Mongo with everything you got. And uh, shy town up and bears down. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Yep. Good night. Hang on out for one second, fellas.